He worked hard all year, just wanted a few weeks alone. But his old lady's into model and she can't get away from her phone. Well, hello and welcome to another a series of exciting neighborhood training episodes here at the Falmouth Fire and Rescue Department. We are going to work today on the kind of middle section of Sandwich Road from Brick Kiln Road up to Thomas Landers Road. Uh, that section in there which is uh, without exception residential. It's zoned residential. It's, um, you know, it is entirely a residential area. And here uh, we are going to take from Brick Hill all the way up to basically an intersection with uh, Thomas Landers Road up in there. And that's what we look like uh, geographically. A couple of uh, points. Obviously, we see a few housing developments when we look over a map like this. Um, we do see a pretty large parcel here of uh, open land. And then we have this area here, which is we will look into more depth as we go through. Um, we're going to start just briefly, just do a quick little look-see uh, down here on uh, the bottom end where it connects to Sandwich Road. I know it's not all that clear, uh, and we're not going to spend a whole lot of time with this map, but just point out a few features here. We're not going to go into the Jamie Lane uh, at this time, we'll cover that on Brick Helm. But we can see here the layout uh, on this side. On the left side, we have uh, a new development called Anders Lane, uh, which backs up to Spectacle Pond up here. And we have the, I think it's Windwood uh, development here that's relatively new um, the past 10 or 15 years. Uh, we have this chunk here of conservation land on the left. And then we get into uh, Pinewood, and then there's a new development trying to go into here behind one of these residential houses, not having too much success. Um, then on the right-hand side, as we go in down the uh, first area that we really hit into a lot of houses in, is in Tanglewood. And we will uh, spend a little bit of time uh, with that, Tanglewood, Crofton, Meredith, um, of Limerick Lane, and then we have uh, development in here, uh, Pitch Pine, Green Acres, Pine Hollow, where we have some uh, firefighter personnel that live in there. And uh, here we have a, uh, a sand and gravel pit to the rear, pretty, uh, pretty extensive. Uh, if you look at the area that the Green Acres Road development takes, you can almost fit that inside of the sand pit here. So we're talking you know, I don't know, probably uh, 10 acres, probably, of sand and gravel um, pit. And then we uh, come into some roads that lead into Pinecrest, Deepwood, and Greenwood. And a little thing called Parker Mills Road, uh, Canterbury Lane, uh, Circle Development. And then the next one up is Grace Court. Across from that, we have Tamarack, Cold Spring, Clearwater that run into uh, Pinecrest. And as we move further up, we have uh, Pinecone and Corinne, which do not connect to uh, Pinecrest. On paper, they do. And then we have the Trillmark uh, condo development here. And then we have Carlton Circle Motel. And then on up with uh, Lakewood and Pinecrest Beach, uh, John Parker and um, turn a row. So, uh, and we end up with the uh, Kunamesset River and the uh, bogs, which we'll talk about when we work um, down in the uh, East Falmouth area. Now, just a quickly, I think one of the quick maps that um, they've mentioned before that I look at is uh, when I look at an area I look at uh, this here, the, the uh, town GIS map. It shows pretty clearly um, 
how things are laid out as far as um, the lot sizes and all that. But uh, what I'm more interested in here is the water mains and the hydrants and how they are laid out and to see whether there's any areas that um, do not have uh, water. The other thing I'm looking at is also to see whether there's any conservation land that will never be built upon. To me, um, from a fire, fire protection perspective, that's of interest because that area will never be built on. There won't be any residential dwellings on there, but it'll also remain as a forested land. So that is something that we need to be aware of and to protect. And here we do see an area here that um, just as we head up in Sandwich Road, we have these three houses here that come off a little um, old road that uh, when they straighten Sandwich Road out, uh, there's the three houses in here, but this area here is now, uh, I believe, going to be uh, protected. I think it's 300 committee land, and that this is also conservation land in here. So this won't be built on. It'll stay in a, a fairly uh, natural state. And as well as this area here between, uh, yeah, this was, I think this was a, a Tavares parcel or whatever, but anyway, it's all connected in. Um, so we do have a lot of, we have a good hydrant system throughout, it looks, as we're looking at uh, many of the developments in there. This map always takes a long time to load up. And pretty much that just kind of shows, you know, that we do have um, water throughout that area and even into chill mark and on up. So, but as we see here as well, the other thing that I do note is places like uh, here's that open parcel of land and here's a sand pit there. Eventually, would we be able to predict that those would be uh, housing units? Maybe they'll sell this for conservation land after 300 committee the town gives them enough property, uh, enough money. And maybe that will as well, or maybe they'll be developed. My concern is that this stays open forest land like this, then we do have a brush fire uh, potential. And I can see the town trying to connect these two pieces together pretty easily. Um, I would probably say that that might end up being some uh, 300 committee prospect there trying to connect these together. But being as it may, we spend too much time on that map. Um, and I want to just briefly, and I don't want to start up in here yet. Uh, we're going to look at some of the roads and the road network that comprise this area. Okay. And we'll go in a little tighter here. Here's where we were talking about um, this old section of Sandwich Road here. And one thing we had talked about before, the south section of uh, sandwich Road, the uh, gallons per minute on the hydrant here, we have uh, 1,300 and we have another 1,300. So really, at this section here, we have good water uh, gallons per minute flow. And here's Anders Lane. It shows that there's only two houses at the, uh, the very end of it. Eventually, I suppose there'll be a few more. Um, and then we look at the, I think it's uh, Wynwood uh, development here of uh, Marla Lane, uh, Victor Victoria Circle, and uh, huh. I'm all tangled up with my uh, Valerie Circle. That's right. Valerie, Marla, and Victoria. There we go. And those have been put in probably in the past uh, 15 years. So we'll look at a couple in there. They pretty seem to be pretty, uh, I wouldn't say high-end houses, but they're, they're um, well-constructed uh, houses. And then we go on the opposite side of the street. One thing uh, 
that is occurring throughout Falmouth and is indicative of this area here is there's a lot of accessory uh, apartments that are going in, whether they're legal or illegal, is uh, up to the town building department uh, to be concerned about. But from our perspective, we have to um, kind of be prepared for that for some of the larger houses. And we have to look for the clues for that. Perhaps it's separate meters, separate mailboxes, um, cars parked on two ends of a house. Uh, maybe it's a, um, a stairway leading up to a uh, bonus room or something above a garage or wherever. Those are signs that perhaps that's an accessory apartment. And this area here, we um, there's a few examples uh, of it almost right across from the this Marla Lane, uh, one of these houses right across the street, uh, they rent out um, quite a few of the uh, rooms in the house, and I believe uh, this house up here, 348 as well does, um, and I think one of the houses just before Tanglewood, uh, looks like it's getting a little overgrown, but it looks like they did have at one time um, divided up. And I believe there's quite a few more as you go down Sandwich Road. Um, that's happening more and more as people who own the house need some extra income, but also as people need affordable places to stay. Um, we we'll want to work a little bit on Tanglewood at this time. And uh, in Tanglewood, we have Tanglewood Drive goes all the way down. Meredith is his first left. As you can see, uh, these all look like quarter acre lots, and 95% of the houses in there, I would guess, are uh, all split level raised ranches. There are a few capes, there are a few regular ranches in there, but by and large, you got to think if you're going into um, Tanglewood, it's going to be for a um, split level, which in my experience has been a pain in the neck as far as any type of medical call because you got the short staircase going up and down and uh, and even from the fire end it's not much fun either. But at the end we have uh, Crofton Lane and we have some new uh, houses added to the end of this over the past 10 years and one of them is uh, this Meredith Drive North, this this section here is called Meredith Drive North. And you can see the numbers are 9, 5, and 3. So that may come in on our 911 screens, and that's what we're looking at. These are regular Meredith Drive. These have been added, and these have been added on Tanglewood. Um, uh, as where someone's driving down John Parker Road on the other side of these bogs, I mean, perhaps they might see a fire or something through the trees, and that's what they're that's what they could be looking at. Uh, while we're talking about Tanglewood, I want to review just a uh, couple of pretty routine things. Um, I just want to review real quick the um, split level house arrangement, or more, a lot of people call it a raised ranch. You know, pretty straightforward. I'm sure everybody's familiar with it. This whole Tanglewood development was built in 1975-ish, around in there, um, from some farmlands. And as you can see, there's a lot of uh, pines around here. This house here is looks pretty much abandoned to me. It's at the uh, it's on uh, Meredith Drive, right on the right hand side. But I took a couple pictures just to review uh, real quick. Uh, obviously, the uh, Front door, you got those the stairs, one going down, one going up. See these big bay windows here, obviously indicating some sort of a, like a living room, a rec room, or that type of arrangement. Um, our bedrooms are pretty straightforward, bang, bang, and around the corner. Uh, most of them are wood shingled, asphalt roof. Um, and then uh, perhaps a living quarters down here. Now, those are all the variations to the split level. Sometimes people have made these into separate apartments down below, whether it's for family members or whether they're renting it out. So uh, we may run into that. Sometimes they're finished, sometimes they're unfinished. Some of these houses, depending on the topography, have a garage. 
that goes under um, one side or the other of the house and takes up the predominance of the basement. But that's pretty uh, straightforward. Um, a four foot foundation instead of an eight foot foundation. So as far as a fire in this lower level, it's not quite as bad as when we have a full um, basement. And oh, what happened there? Oh, that's not what I want. Okay. And then we'll look at the back side of it, uh, the uh, B and C side. Uh, most of them do have some sort of chimney come up the side and they have this deck arrangement on the back. Now my experience of a lot of these places is this deck, these decks here are pretty shaky. Either people have replaced them or have not replaced them or these supports are not quite as strong as they should be. So you really wanna test these stairs and this deck out before you start putting some weight on it. Uh, quite a few of them have been you know, real shaky. Uh, Typical slider right off of the uh, kitchen dining room area. Not too typical to have this back door. Most every exit is through the slider, but this one does have a back door. Um, kitchen window. This one here, the smaller window, should indicate to us a bathroom. We should be seeing a bedroom uh, window here. And then there is a uh, access to the basement since it only has a four foot basement down there. This is the rear access to um, to the basement instead of, some do have a bulkhead, but this majority of them just have a doorway um, that runs down there. So that's pretty, just to review real quick, um, you know, it's always something to, um, to check out and just kind of quiz ourselves on, you know, what we might be facing. Three o'clock in the morning, we're scratching our heads trying to figure this out in the heat of the moment. It should just come to us naturally. All right. Um, and as we go back, uh, we mentioned Limerick Lane. There are a few houses that are backed in off of the road. Um, not too many. And we have Pinewood uh, Drive here. Uh, that is also, you know, been here probably 10 or 15 years. Um, then we have the uh, Green Acres Road, uh, Pine Hollow, uh, Pitch Pine Lane development. Uh, Green Acres comes down, I mean, uh, excuse me, Pitch Pine comes down uh, to here, and then uh, Pine Hollow, and then Green Acres is a straight shot around here. We do have a good hydrant there, a thousand gallons a minute. So, uh, you know, we have, uh, see, my mother lives here at number 11. We have Richie Henry at number 16 right on the corner. We have uh, Bill Peck. Uh, Lives over here 30, Captain Howard on 33. We have a retired firefighter, Ken Marshall, that lives, uh, I believe it's 8, uh, Pine Hollow. And we have a former call firefighter, uh, Joe Martino, lives down the end. So, got quite a uh, bit of uh, fire experience. At one time, one of the other deputy chiefs, Russ Robbins, uh, lived down here as well. So, it was quite a, it was a fire neighborhood. Um, and then you have these entrances to Pinecrest, the uh, Greenwood and Deepwood. And we've spoken about them before. We went through uh, Pinecrest, but it's always good to review that because those are the quick accesses, especially for the front end of uh, Pinecrest for, uh, you know, for access. We gotta know whether it's on the back side or the front side. All right, and then we have Canterbury uh, Lane here. Once again, that was put in in the mid-70s, that's mostly all ranches, a single-story ranch. And then we have uh, Grace Court, uh, about uh, 20 houses in there. A lot of those are capes and split levels as well. And uh, then we got the Chilmark uh, condos. Those are all duplexes and they're pretty well labeled. Um, and as you see, they got a good hydrant system in there. Uh, they are pretty well labeled, and we're going to take a quick peek at that. Uh, white pine uh, cuts through into Pinecrest. And then as we move up, uh, we have, um, let this fill in here a second here. Okay, good. 
All right, we got these other entrances into uh, Pinecrest Beach. And let's see, Wedgwood, uh, I can't remember the top of my head. We have uh, Carlton Circle here, and then the Carlton Circle Motel. And that is going to be one of our target hazards uh, for that area, being a multifamily. Um, I know we've been out there a few times for medical. We've been out there a couple of fires. Um, they used to have a bar underneath here, but no longer. Um, but there are people that are living in that that, um, you know, economically are a little, are quite a bit strapped. So um, we have to be concerned about that. Maybe the shortcuts, they're all efficiency apartments and they're very small. So people are going to try and take shortcuts to, um, you know, fit their economic needs. And then we have the intersection with John Parker down this valley here in the beginning of uh, Turner Road. And, um, and that's where I'm, we're going to end up. But this map here, um, just for perspective, this is um, the Kunamesa River that runs from uh, Oxbow down uh, by Falmouth Port all the way up uh, to the uh, to Kunamesa Pond. So that's where we are going to end up that one and we're going to go through a few more uh, pictures here let's see if I can rattle these off uh, kind of quick here here is the Carlton Circle Motel this is just the uh, side A I guess you'd call it from Sandwich Road you know and we can see quickly over this area here well it's not too good of a perspective but these are two units here, um, so that's a two motel unit. The alarm system is in the uh, right in the main office in here, and they do have an alarm system. It is not tied into our uh, 100 mil system because we don't run a uh, red line out there, but it is tied in to a supposed to be tied into a telephone alarm anyway. And of course, there's buildings and and so forth out back. I'll leave that one up there. Uh, 406, I believe, is going to show the sign for Chillmark. As I mentioned, uh, once you go into Chillmark, there is uh, four or so duplexes on either side. And as I mentioned, they are pretty well labeled. Uh, A, B, C, D to the left, and these ones here to the right. So that's pretty good. Um, we want to take a look at the just one of the buildings in Shellmark. It's a duplex uh, building, and they do have uh, numbers, uh, well, A and B and C and D and so forth, pretty well labeled right on the front. So they're pretty good size uh, units there. All right. And then we will go a little bit further to show uh, a couple of houses that are on uh, Sandwich Road. This is some of the smaller uh, houses that are in that area. As I mentioned, um, there are a lot, of, besides capes and ranches, there are quite a few of these smaller, um, what I call cottages along Sandwich Road. And this is just an example of two of them. These back up to uh, the Greenacre Road development. Uh, okay, and one more here. Okay. All right. Well, that does that. Oh, that's not that. I don't want that one there. Okie dokie. All right, and then we'll just review real quick. Uh, this middle section or central section of Sandwich Road and some of the um, things that we've already gone over. And here we go, the central uh, area of Sandwich Road. You can call it T-Ticket, East Falmouth, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, uh, 255 to 650. Roughly, this is uh, Station 5's uh, first due district and headquarters is second due. Hydrant system is good. 
throughout uh, residential, as we mentioned, single family, uh, wood frame predominantly. We do have accessory apartments. Um, we do have, uh, of course, the multifamily at uh, Carlton Circle, uh, 600 to 2,000 square foot. Uh, the roads in that network, Sandwich Road, Anders, Marla, Victoria, Valerie Circle, Tanglewood, Meredith, Crofton, Meredith Drive North, Limerick, Pinewood, Pitch Pine, Green Acres, Pine Hollow, Parker Mills is just a dirt road that runs down to that uh, sand pit behind Green Acres, Greenwood, Deepwood, Canterbury, Grace Court, Tamarack, Pine Cone are the ones over on the left as we go um, so it's pine crest, uh, pine cone, Corinne, or in that uh, white uh, or pine cone development, I think they call it, uh, and Chilmark Drive. Uh, okay, there's some accessory apartments, Carlton Circle, Sand and Gravel Pit. This is our uh, response times. Station 5 is just under three miles, uh, so we should be able to get there in six minutes. This is to a uh, address in uh, Canterbury Circle, or Canterbury Lane, actually. Excuse me. Uh, station one, 3.6 miles, so really uh, only a little more than a half a mile more away uh, in a straight shot down Sandwich Road, where Station Five has to go through John Parker. So, uh, or Station Five could come up for a kiln in down Sandwich if you look at. If you really measure out your distances, sometimes you'll be surprised. Sometimes uh, um, going the twisting down John Parker to get here isn't uh, all that much faster than shooting down East Falmouth Highway, Brick Hill, and then over there. Uh, station 4 is uh, slightly beyond that, just even another half mile or, or so, three quarters. But uh, four miles, just a little over four miles. And then station 3 and 2 are both about six and a half or so miles so you're talking you know by 12 uh, 12 minutes to get out there we shouldn't really need more engines than that except at the Carlton Circle um, with that so that about wraps up that central section of uh, Sandwich Road as I mentioned a little residential area um, but still uh, quite um, you know, quite a bit of woodlands. We do have this area here up behind Tanglewood that they use as a good motorcycle track, and I wouldn't want to uh, necessarily have a brush fire in there, but there's certainly enough woodland there to uh, present us with a good, um, a good fire that uh, with the uh, southwest breezes, uh, you know, could really be pushing it to this development off of John Parker. It's all pines and it's flat, so it's perfect for our apparatus to go in here. This whole area here, uh, terrain-wise, is uh, pretty much all flat. So we uh, do have some good uh, opportunity with that. All right, well, that about wraps that up for this edition of Neighborhood Training. And stay safe and eat healthy.